Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion for not February 22nd. <laughs> February 4th, 2022. Now, we still have some leftovers from that major winter storm that created significant amounts of ice across the Ohio River Valleys area, and that is more or less over into the portions of New England. You can see here, if we zoom in, we actually do have quite a bit of snow, sleet, and freezing rain evident here. According to radar, your snow is in your whites and blues, your sleet's in your oranges, and your freezing rain is in your pinks. So we do have quite a bit of that activity still left over, and that's more than likely going to be around the portions of Boston as well as Plymouth. If we zoom in here in the New England general vicinity, you can see there is quite a lot of frozen precipitation across the board, stretching from portions of central Maine all the way down into portions of Boston, Hartford, Providence, Rhode Island, Plymouth. That general vicinity is getting a lot of either snow, sleet, or maybe even freezing rain. So that's definitely one of those things where we're going to have to watch out for some additional ice that could be lingering through that area, but it's not going to be a whole lot. As you can see, much of this precipitation is now starting to go off of the coast and even head off towards portions of New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. So uh, for people who live over there in that portion of Canada, I would definitely be wary for that sort of precipitation that can move on through. But for the United States, you guys are pretty much done with this event. So now that we've briefly touched upon what's happening now, let's take a look at the future with our simulated radar. And we're going to use the Euro model for this, but then eventually we're going to use some other models to compare as to what they could potentially see in the future as well. And uh, we've got some interesting things here to watch out for, but you can see how the massive band of that wintry precipitation now starts to move out of New England. You have a little bit of a snowmaker there, a new Alberta clipper that might rage on through with a lot of cold air that's coming in behind this. And that's mainly because of this additional low pressure system that forms down here along the coastline of the Carolinas. And what this could do is because there's a lot of cold air that's surging in behind this low pressure system, areas over here in upstate Carolina or even into portions of Virginia, maybe even portions of Tennessee as well, they could see some residual frozen precipitation from this, more than likely some sort of snow, not expecting to see a whole lot of sleet or freezing rain from that, but definitely could see something around that time frame there, sometime around the afternoon hours of Monday into the afternoon and late evening hours of Monday as well. And you can see the timings above me in Eastern. So if you guys want to be able to attribute us to around what time this is moving on through, it's relatively accurate as to what you could potentially be seeing. And as we shift this off here from Tuesday into Wednesday, this low pressure system starts to deepen quite rapidly, not exactly to the point to where it becomes a bomb cyclone, but you could see a lowering low pressure system over there, creating some strong gusty winds for portions of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, that general vicinity near Maine. And that could also bring some frozen precipitation as well as your general rain showers too. Now, as we play this on a little bit further, you're going to see a couple interesting things here that start to arise. One, we have this new low pressure system that forms way off of the coast of the United States, but then we have this new Alberta clipper right here. And these are the two areas to watch here, this low pressure system and the low pressure system that's going to most certainly bring snow across portions of Ontario, the Great Lakes, and the Midwest regions. Depending upon how close to the coast this low pressure system actually gets, can determine as to whether or not portions along the coast could actually get some wintry precipitation. You'll see in future models that that actually ends up being the case to where some areas could see some snow, sleet, or even freezing rain, more than likely snow though, from that low pressure system because of how much cold air actually comes in behind that system. But regardless, even after that moves on through from Thursday into Friday, on Friday into Saturday, look at this clipper that's moving on through. This is going to basically bring some snow and even rain in some areas here of not only Ontario, but even into portions of the Ohio River Valley, Great Lakes, and even into the Northeast as well. That will basically push off and on into portions of Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. You can start to see a bit of a pattern here as to how most of these low pressure systems are going to be more than likely forming in the portions of Canada and kind of either running on through in that area, or there's going to be low pressure systems that form off the coast of the United States. 
and move on out. But I am actually starting to see that there could potentially be a change and that we could have a window of opportunity to where we could see severe weather. Because if you've been paying attention for any of the other states here, so, you know, areas over here in the Rockies, the West, into portions of the Central Plains, the Southeast, you guys haven't gotten squat from what I've shown you, all right? And what's happening here, basically... Is if we take a look at the 500 millibar wind shear, which is about six kilometers above ground level, this is going to tell us a lot of things. Whenever you see a bit of a dip in the jet stream at the bottom, right above that dip, there's a bit of a low pressure system there. So you can anticipate that there's going to be another low pressure system right there, a surface low pressure system off of California as well. And then whenever there isn't a low pressure system and there's a bit of a loop above the dip, you can see that this is more than likely going to be a high pressure system. And the reason why that is, is because it creates this kind of clockwise flow within this area. So you have counterclockwise flow here as a low, and then you have clockwise flow, which is over with this high pressure system that is over near Bermuda. So let's play this about here. You can see that we have one clipper that moves on through, and then we have another low pressure system that begins to try and develop, but it's not exactly super intense for the most part. And so this is going to end up creating a bit of a boundary here and along this boundary here, which is around the time frame of which that second low pressure system can anticipate to form and move off into portions of Bermuda. Usually what happens along these boundaries is what I just said, low pressure systems are going to form off of these. And so we could anticipate potentially some sort of wintry precipitation that could move on through if it gets close enough to the coast. If it doesn't and goes with the Euro solution, then we can anticipate it to not really do a whole lot. But on the other hand here, you can see that we have our other low pressure system here, right? You see this little dip in the jet stream. We can see that there's a low pressure system here. And for that reason, that is more than likely going to be relatively consistent. And we could potentially see some frozen precipitation across the general area there that we mentioned. But I want to draw a light here to the other thing, not low pressure systems, a high pressure system. And look at our ridge here that is developing across portions of southwestern United States into portions of western Mexico. This is eventually going to shift off towards the east. And whenever that happens, you can potentially see a bit of a shot of severe weather that can move on through. So you can see how the high pressure system now officially starts to move a lot further and further over. You can kind of see how the center of these little circles here indicate as to where the high pressure system is actually going to be. And because that is the case, because that high pressure system is going to move on through, a building low pressure system, all right? I'm gonna tell you right now, this low pressure system is probably not gonna show up when it actually says here on the model, all right? It could be within a couple of days of each other, but the thing that's relatively consistent is that most of these models are indicating that that high pressure system that is off of the coast of the United States, the Western United States, is anticipated to move eastward. And whenever that happens and your high pressure system moves out of the way that is blocking what could potentially start up severe weather, you can anticipate that you're gonna get more severe weather. And the reason why that is the case is because usually when we have our significant severe weather outbreaks that occur across portions of the central to southern plains heading into the Ozarks and the deep south, our low pressure system first has to build enough momentum here and enough strength to where it can then cut through. And if it starts to develop here across portions of California, then it will eventually start to build and actually swing on through into the general pattern of this arrow right here. And it'll eventually cut through the United States. And so that is something that we of course do not wanna see, but we can start to anticipate because we do have our dip in the jet stream, which is right here. Or if you want to anticipate with this surface low that what the euro is saying, then we can attribute that as well. But then on the opposite side, you can see this big loop over here. And this is our ridge, our big high pressure system that is now building across portions of the Ozarks. And so what does that mean? Well, it's probably going to surge on through and cut through the center portions of the United States. So we got to watch out for that somewhere over here from the central to southern U.S. into the eastern portions of the U.S. That is where there could potentially be some severe weather. I am anticipating within the end of week three or sometime within week three of February, so that'd be the 14th through the 18th, maybe 19th and 20th could potentially see some severe weather as well. But this isn't just the only model that's been saying this, guys. If we shift our attention over to the GFS, you can see something very similar here as to how things kind of progress. 
You can also tell as to where our significant low pressure system could potentially be on the 7th into the 8th as well, with a big dip in the jet stream right there, and it's actually a lot further south than what the Euro had it to where it was almost practically over portions of Ontario. So this is a little bit further south than what the Euro had, but you can also see your building high pressure system over here into portions of the southwestern United States, and that is going to eventually move on through. Watch, you have that big steady stream of shear that now now starts to build right within this area some significant amounts of wind shear that pushes about and your high pressure system is expected to start to strengthen more and more this is when you can see that clipper that starts to move on through in the portions of the northeast with that low pressure system and then look your high pressure system now starts to finally move out of that general area and then you have this new low pressure system all right this is what i was talking about to where if you're going to have a low pressure system that forms over here it needs to start to build strength here we are at about the 17th to where we have some strong wind shear on the southern side of that low pressure system. And when that strong shear starts to get wrapped around a little bit more, the low pressure system also starts to turn as well. And it starts to veer a lot further towards the left. So watch what happens here. You can see how our low pressure system forms, moves off towards the side. And then we have another low pressure system that could potentially form. And that could be a catalyst for some severe weather as well. So I'm anticipating sometime along the middle to end portions of week three of February heading into week four of february which would be sometime around the 16th 17th 18th 19th 20th maybe even the 21st that is where there could potentially be a starter for the severe weather season even though severe weather season doesn't really officially start until around march 1st and if we take a look at the canadian model here just for reference as to what could potentially happen with our potential weather all right we got our clipper that's moving on through into the great lakes that is accurate we have our high pressure system that's continuing to build you got your strong shear that's going to start plunging on through here look at that big dip in the jet stream that moves on through into portions of the central and eastern portions of the united states but look at our big building high pressure now all right this is the third model that has said that the high pressure system is going to move eastward and when that happens and our high pressure system continues to move further and further eastward you know that afterwards within the span of about five days there's probably going to be some severe weather and in this instance, well, the Canadian model doesn't go that far out. So this is a little bit of a cliffhanger for you all. But hey, this is still a pattern that we need to continue to watch out for because severe weather is going to be on the horizon eventually, all right? When we get to March and we, when we get to April, it's going to happen, all right? That's a big deal as to whether or not it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm telling you right now, there will be severe weather and it could potentially be significant severe weather as well. I just don't know when. I don't know where and uh, I can only forecast what's going to happen within the next two weeks maybe even two and a half weeks if I really push myself so that's just going to be something to where we're going to have to keep in mind as to what the weather patterns are going to be like but while doing so we can also take a look at the weather models to give us a general idea as to what could happen and when we have more than one model that's saying that this pattern is going to change we have to actually pay attention to it so let's take a look at the GFS simulator reflectivity now just to try and see if it's anywhere near what the euro said and as this goes up into the eighth you can see our low pressure system that forms off the coast with our cold air that's going to start to move on through and then we have up into the 10th to where we have another low pressure system that's surging off into portions of the northeast with our new low pressure system look at this instead of it going across into portions of bermuda look it rides all the way up into portions of nova scotia and new brunswick and it creates a lot of snow for portions in the northeast so we got to watch out for that as well because the potential for winter weather could exist within your general vicinity but then as this plays on through this is really interesting right here all right the 13th is where there could potentially be a little bit of severe weather as well as winter weather according to the gfs gfs says there's a lot of snow into portions of the upper midwest into the great lakes as well as the northern plains and then there could potentially be some severe weather that lingers down from portions of illinois missouri arkansas as well as the texarkana general vicinity so we got to watch out for that but then as this moves on through you'll see that the gfs starts to form this new low pressure system that's going to come across and boom 
Now we have some severe weather that could potentially be on the horizon, according to the GFS. And on top of that, it's not just that. You can also see snow, freezing rain, sleet across the area. So it's just, it goes to show you how the potential exists, and we got to continue to watch out for it. Of course, I'll continue to keep you guys updated on this channel if you guys do stick around. So I know that was a relatively short video, but... I mean, you guys saw it for yourself. Between the time periods of what I was talking about, there really wasn't anything to really mention. Uh, weather is going to be relatively quiet for the next week or two, and uh, because of that, we can only look for what's going to happen after that, and we only have so much to look at at this instance. So I'll continue to keep you guys up to date if you do stick with me on the channel, all right? If you subscribe and turn on notifications, I'll update you guys frequently as we continue to get closer and closer to the actual events in question. I also want to mention here real quickly that we have over 25,600 subscribers now, all right? That is all from you guys. So this community has expanded so much from the time period of what it was last year. All right, if I can pull it up the entire time here, the lifetime of the channel. This is 2021, the beginning of 2021, January 1st, I had 1,900 subscribers. And you can see how much we have grown over the time period of a year. So this could not be possible without all of you. And I really do appreciate it. So if you want to become a part of this community, feel free to do so. It is free. And I really do appreciate all of you all who have done so already. So that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications. Share this with friends and family and on social media so that we can get this information out to as many people as possible. Although it isn't really all too urgent. So we can't really expect, you know, this to be a, a big significant situation right now. But... It is a really interesting forecast, and if you know people who do enjoy stuff like this, then this is the channel to be on, man. Our give it to me straight question of the day here is, should I do more winter weather streams, all right? If you forget about the severe weather, should I do more winter weather streams, all right? The one that gets the most likes, all right? The one comment that gets the most likes, I will pin as long as it is relatively accurate to what the question name entails is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you on Sunday night, everyone. Peace out.